Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Book Goodies, the author and author services podcast. I'm your host, Deborah Carney, and with me today I have China Reed. Hi China, how are you? Good, good, thanks Deb. How are you? I'm good. Now you have a, a, a nice service that you provide for authors that I'll let you explain, but first why don't you introduce yourself to our audience and uh, give them a little bit of background about who China is. Sure, absolutely. Um, my name is China Reed, as you stated, and I'm originally from uh, Philadelphia, PA. Um, I've been in the South Jersey area for about 13 years, um, and my company, RPIC in short, um, which stands for Reed Public Image Consulting, uh, it is a company that largely represents authors, um, and these many times are authors, whether they're you know novice or, or if they're celebrity authors who have had several books. We concentrate um, on ensuring that their book is the top quality, that once it goes out for production, you know, that it is absolutely right. Um, we, one of our models is um, surpassing the industry standards um, because so many times in this industry for authors, there's a lot of services that are offered, um, but sometimes different companies are just out to make a buck, to be honest. Yeah. So we really, we really pride ourselves on taking the time with each and every one of our authors to find out their vision and to first make sure that we can even execute their vision. Uh, and we don't support or represent any author that we don't believe in, quite frankly. Um, and, and that's, that's kind of sort of, that's kind of sort of our motto. Uh, we truly want our authors to succeed. And in turn, then of course, you know, we will be succeeding. So that's, that's kind of what we do there. Well, and that's really great, and you're not the first person to tell me that you're choosy on who you represent, and it's really good, like in my business, I'm also a consultant um, in a different industry, and I'm, I'm picky about who I represent because if I'm putting you out there, it's my reputation on the line. Absolutely. And that's what it is for you. You don't want to give your contacts something that, um, you know, isn't up to par, because then the next time you reach out to those contacts, they'll be like, nah, -uh, you, you gave us junk mm -hmm. last time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, being choosy is very smart. And in yes. the long run, everybody's happier. Yes, absolutely. And so many times, Deborah, you know, we, we need, we have these um, consultations with authors, and they've had such a bad experience with, with uh, different people in the industry, and it's so sad, you know, um, it's number one, it's financially in today's um, industry, you know, just in the economy period, financially, people don't have, you know, thousands of dollars just to be, oh, well, that didn't work out as a store. Let me try right. this here. You know, right. so it, I, I, my heart really goes out to authors who maybe have, you know, made an attempt and it just didn't go the way that they felt and then they kind of give up. That, that just really breaks my heart because I feel as though if you know deep down that you're, you know, that you're a writer and that's your love, no one should, you know, kind of tackle you down where that's something that you're saying, you know what, I'm not getting back up from that. Yeah. And, and it's unfortunate. So many times we meet with people and they just tell us these horror stories, you know, and then what that does for us being, you know, representatives in the industry is that we have to break that wall down because now they've developed such a strong wall, like, okay, I don't know if you're shady or not, you know. Yeah. So, um, so, again, as you were saying, Deborah, your name and this industry is all that you have, and we want all of our authors and clients to be very comfortable with us, with our services. There's never any pressure with us. I mean, we really try to inform them whether or not they choose to be with RPIC or that they choose to go to a different air, you know, area. We, we really want them to have the knowledge, and that's what's most important with us. Yep, you have to give people the background, and even people that aren't a good fit for you or their book isn't quite ready yet, you can mm -hmm. send them away with information that will help them when it is time for them or to help them find uh, a company that is the right fit for them because perhaps exactly. they're, just, they're just a genre that you don't handle and that you're not comfortable handling. So mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And it just could not be a fit for both of us. So, I mean, we definitely do that at the end of our, consul our initial consultations usually – uh, when we do our follow-up assessment, you know, we'll let them know, listen, this, this wasn't exactly the right fit, but here's option A, B, and C that you may be interested in, you know, totally not affiliated with our company at all, and let them kind of do the research themselves, um, and that way they can make a, a, an informed decision and, and be happy with the decision that they do make. 
Yeah, not just grab somebody off a Craigslist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, not at all. First warning, do not go to tra- Craigslist to find a publicist, an editor, yes. or, uh, or anything. anyone associated with uh, writing because they are a scam. Yes. And also to be forewarned, if someone has a package all in one for one very low price, the yeah. publisher and editor and publicist marketing, for it's, it's definitely beware of that, you know? Yep. If, it's, yeah. if it looks too good to be true, mm-hmm. yep, that's, that's the it way it goes. It is true. <laughs> yep. And definitely. As a writer, with the way the publishing industry is going, the, the traditional publishing houses that used to handle everything for you, are uh, cutting back. They're you know they're not taking new writers, or they you know they're hard to get into. And what this is, what I see this doing is allowing a lot of companies like yours to come to the forefront now to fill a need where people used to be able to just hand their book to the publishing house, and mm-hmm. you know everything was done for them, and then they just had to you know spread the word once the the book was published. Right. And right. now, A, they can't handle it all. B, mm-hmm. with it being so easy to self-publish via, you know, CreateSpace, Lulu, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Lightning Source, all the different places, and then all the ebooks. you know, there's a lot more people that instead of even trying to go the traditional route, which it can take mm-hmm. um, years, they just want to go indie, and they still need you. They still need an editor. They still need a publicist. They still need PR. They still need marketing. Yeah. And that's where I see a lot of these uh, companies like yours are going to start to flourish. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it's funny you say that, Deborah, because someone one time asked me, and said, well, just, just in general, why the concentration for authors? And truthfully, I really, once I was asked um, to help a client out, and, and I just saw the need, she said, you know, I can't afford a licensed literary agent. She right. says, and I'm, I'm submitting these things. She says, and all I want to do is get my, my work reviewed. She said, I'm having such, she said, they won't even look at my first three chapters of my manuscript without me having representation. Can you help me? And that's really the story behind RPIC. Basically, we are the new age medium between a licensed literary agent and the publisher. You know, and, and it's giving authors those, you know, allowing them to be represented um, nowhere near the cost that they can at times uh, incur. So that's kind of the great thing. And we're just, we're steadily changing, Deborah. I mean, we are coming up with different things. We're learning as we go along, and we are adapting with the market. As the market changes, we are learning new things, having new tools, because you have to be able to adapt in an ever changing market. So we can't continue to present. Um, authors with something that has changed or that was the same four years ago because it's now different. Way different. Yes, it's way different. The traditional mom and pop bookstores are now closing. There are very few far in between. I mean, so if you you're having an author who thinks that all they have to do is you know show up to these book signings, oh, I'm an introvert and that's all I can do, you know, unless they're very rich, like very you know a celebrity and, and extremely rich. There's so many different dynamics that are needed in order for them to be successful with their book. It really is. So so that's kind of sort of um, where RPIC comes in, and we want to help our authors. And, and definitely, again, as they succeed, we surely will succeed as well. And talking about that adaptation, I mean, uh, I had books that I wanted to publish four years ago, but um, I'm a photographer. And, mm-hmm. you know, for 30 years I wanted to publish photography books, but it was way too expensive. I mean, even, you know, 10 years ago when the uh, print-on-demand started coming around, you know, if I wanted to get a book of photographs published, it was unheard of. A full-color book? Oh, my God, it's going to be 50 bucks <laughs> just for your right. 25-page book. And I'm like, that's right. ridiculous. And then I have to mm-hmm. sell it for more than 50 in order to make money. Mm-hmm. And right. So with the evolution of the technology and what really tri- triggered me was the Kindle Fire. Now, mm-hmm. I knew the nook, the nook was out there, but, you know, it, it's, it's not Amazon. The Nook is something else, you know. It's, right, it's a right. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, not, to, not to demean anybody that stuff is on the Nook, for me, you know, um, it, it, it had to come in, in the shape of the Kindle Fire, which is uh, the size of a 6x9 book, which is the size yeah. of a normal book that you would be looking at. 
And I actually, you know, read a book. And also the fact that the Kindle applications are available for every device. So people can look at my photography books on a big screen and they look like I intend them to look. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's way cheaper. You know, I mean, a book, I I can sell a photography book for (laughs) $5.99. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, tremendously cheaper. You're right, Deborah. Yeah, and then the other thing um, to keep up with the industry is something that I just put out another query for this afternoon. By the time this goes up, it'll be, you know, a few weeks ago. But I put up a query about whether books, uh, whether authors are successfully using book trailers, video mm-hmm. book trailers. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, that's it. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody's using Pinterest. So. Right. Now, tell me specifically, what are the things that, you know, do you deal with authors, social media? What do you, you said you, you customize for each author, but mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about what, you know, some of those services are that you do. Sure, absolutely. Um, we do, we handle the social, we can do social media, we handle traditional press kits, we handle electronic press kits. Um, we can handle everything from, you know, the, the book trailers um, the filming of the book trailers, the casting, the whole nine with that, um, down to um, the announcements, the official book release parties, um, be it that in different cities, you know, all across the United States. Uh, we even go a little above and beyond, uh, depending on the package. Um, if they want additional assistance in marketing, we do have marketing plans. Um, and again, we do a lot of one on one with our authors again in the beginning to see their vision to kind of see what their need is but we are definitely a full um you know we're on board we're we're a full team um who definitely supports all the things that authors need um you know you name when it comes to to authors and everything that they need we we do it from the uh, allocating the editing services um the posters you know the whole the marketing package the whole nine photography shoots um, just, we really want to ensure that the client is really presented in the best light. So all these different customized packages are put together for each and every client. And none of them, I can say this, none of them are exactly the same. You know, it all comes yeah. down to what the individual need is, definitely. And, of course, it all comes down to what the individual can do themselves also. So, like, maybe they don't need, they need you to kickstart their social, but then they can manage it themselves after that. And, right, right. You know, they don't need you to 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 take care of it ongoing, and mm-hmm. they really need your help in. Okay, like I said, book trailer, and you said you can get that. You know, you can cast those, you can get those filmed, and you know, there's a lot of people that don't even know what they need. You know, like I talked to, yeah. I've talked to some authors, and I've I've mentioned some things, and they're like, no, I don't do that yet, and it's like, okay. And they need to go to somebody who can give them a plan and mm-hmm. say, this is what you need to do. Right. Um, this is what we can do for you. Mm-hmm. This is what we can outsource and hook you up with. Right. Exactly. You know, so that they've got mm-hmm. people that they trust. Right. Definitely. Definitely. And, it, and it's, again, I mean, and another really keen thing that stands out with my company is we don't force anyone into a long forcible contract. Um, you have a contract, but if you're not satisfied for any reason, you know, our contracts are very open and you are allowed to get out of your contract in a very reasonable way, mm-hmm. um, in a very affordable and reasonable way. We don't believe in holding anyone against their will. We want everyone to be happy. We truly do. So we go above and beyond for our clients. And, and knock on wood today, we've never had a client who um, dissolved the contract because of uh, any type of unhappiness that they had with it or with the services, which has truly mm-hmm. been a blessing that it really has. Yeah, the thing that I can see as being a, a reason that someone may have to dissolve a contract, as long as they're happy with your services, is just financial circumstances. You know, exactly. If, you yep. know, if, exactly. In today's economy, somebody can make it be making $100,000 a year one minute and mm-hmm. laid off the next exactly you know and And, and that has happened and i'm sure in your business as well you know it it just happens yep you know you have a client that's a steady client and all of a sudden they're going to close their doors and there's nothing (laughs) you can do about it and you know you just deal with it and 
So when a client first comes to you and they do that first sit down with you, what are what are some of the things you look for so that our listeners would know, like, what should they have ready when they come to talk to you? Sure. They, actually, they absolutely should have ready a written uh, summary of their goals. If they have an outline, you know, everything that they're looking for specifically that they can think of. Because not everyone's an expert. I mean, that's why they're allocating the service. But if they have a vision, if they say, listen, I have this book, um, I really want to first get it reviewed before I even send it to publishing companies to see is it worthy, um, you know, they should have an outline specifically, where everything, you know, I really need headshots, um, I really want your opinion on, do you think that this is marketable, do you think that I am marketable, they should think about questions like that ahead of time and have that ready and good to go, they should think about um, what the goal of the book, I think, you know, people have their personal um, personal stories a lot of times, you know, behind some of the books. Um, and they should think about, you know, who the target audience is. Um, is there a message behind the book? What is the message that you're trying to get out there? Um, if it's just for fun, you know, that's fine. But, again, who your target, target audience is or maybe you need help with trying to figure out who that audience is. But just kind of brainstorm and think about um, all these different questions. It kind of makes our job so much easier. Um, but, again, we're very patient. Um, we're very patient at that initial consultation. It's never a rush thing. Um, and we actually don't charge for our initial consultation. Um, we really want for people to have a comfort level with us, you know. So, and they have that outline. They, they're saying all the things they need, what, what it is that they think they want, what, is, what do they want to accomplish. Um, so, as long as all of that is written down, it kind of makes the initial meeting so much easier. And then we can kind of, you know, take it from there once that's, once that's accomplished. Yeah, and it's really important for them to think about these things for a lot of reasons. I mean, <laughs> there are authors that will walk into a publicist or a marketing uh, company and they'll say, mm-hmm. well, everybody is going to like my book. And yeah. <laughs> it, I wrote it for everybody. It's a general, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a general novel that's going to appeal to the masses. Right, and right. you're like, that's exactly what you say. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now let's get down to business mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. let's figure out who this is really for. Right. And, you know, we aren't all J.K. Rowling, and even she doesn't have everybody in the world loving Harry Potter. There's still people walking around going, what's a muggle? I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've never read one Harry Potter book, so that you said that one right. <laughs> yeah, and yet she, you know, she reached her target audience, which happened to be huge, but mm-hmm. she still isn't universally loved everywhere. And you know, it's the same with a lot of popular series. I mean, Stephen King, wonderful writer. I will not read his stuff. It's freaking scary. Right. right. <laughs> Right, exactly. You're right, Deborah. It's just the truth. You know, everyone has their certain niche. It, it, just, it is the truth, Deborah. Yeah. All right. So they've come in and they've made that personalized plan, and then um, you send them on their way, and you, I'm sure you give them homework. And yeah. um, do you have like a website where you have like online forms where people can fill out ahead of time, or? Uh... Um, we we um, they can fill out a query on my website. Um, and it's just a general information. And once they send in just a, a general query, then a team member gets back to them. And, and yes, they'll have um, a questionnaire that's mailed to them and kind of just kind of assess their specific needs before the meeting is set up. That is a great idea. And yes. uh, now, do you, you work mostly with people face to face, or do you work over the internet? You market over the internet, but your clients yes. are they face to face clients, or are they um, online? We do have a little bit of both. Um, Largely, we are face-to-face. You know, we make our rounds. Again, we want to be very personal. But we do have certain clients who just the area is a little bit far. But we have never had a complaint um, if we're only able to see them maybe quarterly. Um, Their packages are handled the exact same way as the clients that may be local and that we can see all the time. So um, I think, again, the industry is so much uh, via the Internet and, and, you know, Everything's electronic now, so it makes our job easier. But it also affords for us not to have to be, say, in L.A., represent a client in L.A., which we do have, you know, L.A. clients. So that's kind of a good thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned um, in our pre-interview that you have a, a partner that is in Atlanta that has a lot of experience in the publishing industry. 
Yes, absolutely. She has um, our Atlanta division. She has over 20 years of publishing experience. She's owned her own publishing company as well for for quite some time. Um, and then she decided to get into public relations because she found that she was doing so much of it um, <laughs> that it was a field that she was good at and, and that she decided to get in. Um, she's also published her own book. So when you talk about a phenomenal asset to the company, she really um, is such a treasure to RPIC. She knows the ins and outs. And, and we're not just talking um, on her publishing company. She had one or two people. I mean, she really ran a full publishing company. And it still stands today, but she's just in a different role with it. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the public relations, she is phenomenal. Um, there's nothing about um, authors that she's not that she's not familiar with. So she was a huge asset. Um, I thought I knew everything about authors until I met her, and uh, <laughs> she's, she, I really did. I really did. But she she has come on board, and she is just she's just a great asset. Um, but she's definitely someone who you know once people meet with her, they say you know what she's about business. This woman knows there's almost no and no question that you can ask her that she doesn't know the the, question, the uh, answer to. I'm sorry regarding books. It's funny. It really is. That's and and that's that's uh, wonderful to have somebody like that because if you don't know the answer to something, you know that you can. Um, put somebody on hold or while they're sitting there you can say let me make a quick phone call and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know you can get in touch with her and and you know that you can get the answer and mm -hmm. i think the people appreciate that not everybody knows everything as long as the people yes. that you're dealing with know somebody who knows everything <laughs> and, yes yeah and i'm telling you, one of my mentors years ago he told me he said you know you don't have to know the answer to everything and you'll actually be a failure if you think that that's the first step in the wrong direction if you think you do, but mm -hmm. if you know where to find the answer to, then that's half the battle, and I mean, it, it rings so true, Deborah. Now, and I'm very candid with people to say, listen, if this is an area, this is something new on the market, I'm, I'm not familiar with that, you know, with dinner answers, you know, I'm like, okay, let me check that out, I'll be right on it, but no, I'm not familiar with that, you know, quite yet, you know, yep. so again, it's an ever-changing uh, industry, and it's something that, um, that you got to keep up with, but I think, um, Honesty always uh, rings true. You have to say, "Listen, I'm not an expert on this, but I know these. Uh, you know, um, this uh, company over here is good friends of mine who may definitely be able to help me get those answers." You know, and you hit it right on the head right there where you said honesty. And mm -hmm. if you're honest with your clients, they will know it. And if you mm -hmm. are faking it. They will know that too, and then they won't yes. know whether they can trust you, and right, boom, right. they aren't going to listen to you. Absolutely. One of, I always tell my team, you know, one of the things we live by, don't be pressed for the check, be pressed for the result. And I, yeah. and I really stand behind that because I don't want anybody just telling me, that's so irritating, Deborah. I mean, we've had it happen to us, someone just where they just really want your money. Um, and you can, you can sense that a mile away. It's like, okay, let me yep. make the decision for myself. So I don't, there's no pressure selling whatsoever over here with RPIC. We want to have um, that strong, long-term relationship. One thing I will say this with RPIC, we want clients for years. We yeah. don't want to let you go, other than maybe financial reasons or the economy or something that's out of our control. But aside from that, we really want to have that long-term commitment. And we'll tell clients straight up, you know, this isn't um, – we are looking for this period of time of commitment. We want you to visually think about that mm -hmm. because this is something we want to grow with you on. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's something that people, you know, they definitely feel it. They definitely feel it. We're kind of like a family, you know, and it's it's not one of those uh, companies where you can never get anybody on the phone. I mean, there's, there's, um, unless there's some severe uh, circumstance, you know, we're giving you a call right back and definitely that same day, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's that personalized service, I think, that, because we've met so many people, again, that have, have said that they've had bad experiences, and then once they're with us, they're like, wow, you know, you, you guys are really, I, I must say, you're on, you're on point. So um, it, it's, a, it's a blessing, um, and I just feel privileged to be able to own uh, this company, and I want to be able to, to continue to grow with the industry and for my authors to grow um, and for RPIC to be around for a very, very long time with a good name to it, you know. Well, and that's that's what it's all about, building for the future and being flexible enough to build for the future and supplying the services to people which will assure that you will be around for the future. 
So when one author, you know, maybe they only did one book and they only need so much marketing and then, you know, they feel like they're done with it, they'll recommend to you somebody who's writing a series who you'll work with for years and years. Right, so, right. You know, yes, every, word of mouth. Yeah, that's, that's it. You know, mm-hmm. if you provide the service, they'll bring you the people. Mm-hmm. Yes, the word of mouth is the best marketing that you can have. It really is, Deborah. <laughs> I used to be a wedding photographer, and um, I had to put yellow an ad in the yellow pages one year, and uh, the, the very first year that I was in business, and I took like every crappy wedding that was last <laughs> minute. There were fights at the reception, and you know I would find out that after I left, somebody got shot in the parking lot, and they all had to oh my. the hospital. <laughs> and, you know, I really took the bottom of the barrel without realizing it. You know, because right. in order to break in, I was inexpensive and I needed to just build up a portfolio. But mm-hmm. a portfolio that includes mug shots, not so good. So <laughs> <laughs> here's part of your wedding day. Um, so, but my business took, I only had to advertise one year. That was it. Wow. I went 30 wow. years without having to advertise because the 20 or 30 weddings that I got from the Yellow Pages ads. They mm-hmm. grew into word of mouth for the rest of my career as a wedding photographer. And I was a single photographer. I wasn't a company. And I ended it because I had to either grow or not. And since by the time I needed to um, to, to grow or decide not to uh, do it anymore, I had children with medical needs. So I decided that I couldn't afford to you know, book my Saturdays ahead a year in advance. You know, I couldn't right, make a right. commitment to be somewhere uh, a year from then. So, mm-hmm. but it was all word of mouth, and that's a very competitive industry to be in as well. Um, I'm sure. And if you screw up somebody's wedding, man, they're going to tell everybody. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Every guest there will know, and they'll tell five other guests. I'm sure. Yep. Oh, don't hire her. She's horrible. Instead, right. it was hire her. She did, you know, because I was doing it even back before video was very popular. And people would flip through my photos going, oh, I don't remember any of that from my reception. And it was like, it was just like you were videoing. And it's so great. We have these photos. Wow. And wow. it's the same thing with your business. You want people to go, she was so great with, with promoting mm-hmm. my book. I would never dream of having anybody else do it. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Absolutely. That's what we want our clients to walk away. We want them to recommend us. You know, I say, sometimes we get questions like, well, do you do this also? Which is something completely outside of our scope. But it's funny. It's just that they like our ethics so much um, that, you know, they're willing to try to, to get more services out of us. You know, want us to kind of to represent them in all aspects. I mean, even with um, celebrities, it, it's funny representing them in this ever-changing industry. And, again, if they, they latch on to you and they like your style and the way that we execute to represent them, I mean, they really um, kind of latch on and say, well, can't you also do this and that? You know, which is, when I say completely outside of the scope, it's funny, but it's also a nod to, um, to say that they really like our work ethic, which is always humbling. It really is. Well, and it's really hard when you work with celebrities, and there are a lot of celebrities that are um, publishing books now, especially in mm-hmm. the South Jersey area. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, they're, they need to work with people they trust because there are so many people out there trying to get a piece of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when yeah, definitely. you know, definitely. so even you know whether you're somebody making you know billions of dollars and you wrote a book, or you're somebody who's making you know just barely making ends meet and you're mm-hmm. you're writing a book, you both need to have someone you trust that isn't going to um, you know isn't gonna isn't gonna do you wrong. You know, you right, need to right. you need to have people that you can trust around you. Um, mm-hmm. Because Absolutely. if you do something wrong, it tarnishes. It can tarnish their image, and it can tarnish your image. Yes, yes. Because what we were just saying, they're going to spread the word of wow. You know, she did this and that. She don't. You know, they're only concerned about maybe those top clients that they have. And, and again, that's something that um, RPIC really strives. Like everyone is treated equally. You know, we really try to put the same. It doesn't matter if your package may be a little bit differently. We're still going to execute the same way for our clients to let them know that you have representation and that we are here for you. 
Um, and it doesn't matter if uh, this family has millions of dollars, you know. And like you said, first-time author, um, I, I found that many times people, when they first come out, I mean, that, that gem is shining. If they have a love of writing, if they are blessed to be writers, um, that first time out, I mean, that, that work is something that usually isn't exactly duplicated. Right. So it, it's like you're really shining when you have that first novel. So we really treat that's that's the treasure right there because we're getting to bring this first time author out. So we take a lot of pride with that. And again, it doesn't matter if you're making millions of dollars, you know. And we do work with all budgets. Um, again, each plan is specifically um, tailored for every client's needs. So we definitely want people to have a comfort level to, you know, reach out to us, see what we can do for them, because we can definitely tailor a plan to meet a lot of needs. I mean, you know, business is business. We do have to, you know, cover operating expenses, but um, we definitely want people to have a comfort level in knowing um, not just because we do represent some celebrities, oh, they wouldn't have anything for me, because that's just not true. Mm -hmm. We really do treat um, all of our clients equally. And that's that's really important, especially to the first-time author. And uh, they they just all need to know that, um, you know, on paper, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I bought I bought Stephen Tyler's uh, autobiography, or, or and and I read okay. it, and I would uh-huh. tell people that I loved it. If I hadn't liked it, like I bought somebody else's autobiography, and it was horrible. It okay. was, okay. you know, like one of the worst books I ever read. And, oh wow! And I was yeah. bored to tears. And it was somebody you would think <laughs> would be very exciting and write very well, and mm-hmm. it got mm-hmm. to be the same story over and over and over and over again. And right. you know, Stephen Tyler's kept me on the edge of my seat. And I tell people it lets you get into the mind of a person like him. And it's really hard to get into a mind of a. I mean, he is a very unique person. And mm-hmm. his book brings forth all that uniqueness, and I feel wow. very sorry for his editor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, then I couldn't even imagine. Can you imagine? Yeah. Now, if after you read the book, you go mm-hmm. and somebody edited this and tried to put it in order, and this right. is what they got. You know, yeah, I mean, you'll be yeah. reading a chapter in the, and he's in the '80s, and the next thing you know, he's back in high school doing things at the pond. You know, and his mother encouraging him, and his father, he's watching his father play piano someplace. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Are we having a flashback? Did right, right. Time oh, zone? my goodness. You know, where are we? And it's just every person needs to be treated differently. If, if he had written a bad book, I wouldn't tell mm-hmm. anybody about it. You know? Right, it. right. You know, you know, just because he's Steven Tyler, he'll sell a certain number of books. But then, boom, you're done. You know, mm-hmm. just the people right, who are right. absolute diehard fans will buy them. Mm-hmm. That's and, the truth. you know, and yet, you know, a single mom who's overcome adversity, she writes an autobiography and it could hit the, you know, the New York Times bestseller list because it's a true and honest story. Mm-hmm. And, absolutely. That's the truth. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, when you, uh, when you bring somebody on board, do you... Um, you normally get them when they're at the end of writing their first draft or, or do they come to you sometimes in the middle of their writing or at the beginning when they still have an idea? When do when should authors get in contact with you? Usually when they're pretty much completed um, the writing, you know, um, that's when they should get in contact with us and then we can kind of um, see where they need to go, whether or not they want to immediately kind of go into editing we also have, like, pre-editing services mm-hmm. um, because, to be honest, some people, especially first-time authors, they just, they're not familiar with, the, you know, formats that's needed, the whole nine. So mm-hmm. we work with that as well. So if they've um, pretty much written, I would say, at least 75% of their uh, original novel or the novel that they're working on, then that's a good time to reach out. And because um, sometimes when we meet, it may change kind of sort of the way that they're um, finishing up their book. Mm -hmm. But again, um, you know, whatever's um, comfortable for the author, whether they've already had it completed and it's just been sitting on the shelf for years, or whether or not they're going through doing rewrites themselves. You know, I've had people do three, I've changed this, you know, three and four and five times. Um, You know, whenever they have their comfort level, like this is the prize that I'm pretty sure that I want to have, you know, in print then that's the time that they should reach out to us. Okay. Well, 
China, it's been fascinating talking to you. I have enjoyed every minute of this. You've given us a lot of information, and you know, hopefully, our listeners have been able to to uh, gather all those nuggets and and be ready uh, to reach out to the right people at the right time. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, hopefully, many of them will reach out to you or you know whoever they feel comfortable with. Like you said, genre is everything, and you know, personalities. You've got to work with someone who who you mesh with, and not not someone that you're constantly at odds with, because then neither right. one of you is happy. So yeah, definitely, definitely. So tell us. I, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I just really wanted to truly thank you, Deborah, for the outlet. Um, because, again, one thing that I do like to do is, is take the time to talk to authors, and whether they've been in it for years and they're unhappy, or, you know, even authors that have been, been writing for years and they are happy. I want to hear their story as well. So I really, truly appreciate the outlet to be able to discuss with you, you know, kind of sort of what we do, uh, what we're trying to do, and hopefully how we're uh, staying, staying in this change in industry because it changes so much. But I honestly, I truly do appreciate the outlet, Deborah. I really do. Well, and I appreciate that, too, because I I need to... I won't have a podcast if no one will talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> and we want you to have that, because it's so informative, Deborah. They really are. Thank you. And, you know, hopefully people are learning a lot. And um, tell us now where people can find you um, on the Internet, because sometimes our folks are listening on their I, iPad or iTunes, and they aren't right on their computer. Sure. We're at www.read, R-E-D, P is in Peter, I is in Ice, consulting.com. That's read, P-I, consulting.com. And if someone wants to send an email, they have a question, feel free to email us at info, I-N-F-O, at read, P-I, consulting.com. That's awesome. Um, thank you. And the offer, you know, to let people email you, you, you might get overridden. <laughs> you, you might get you might get a rush of emails when we post this. <laughs> That's okay. We love it. We'd love to talk to everyone, truly. So uh, for those of you who are listening um, and you're on, an, on a podcatcher or listening on iTunes, we would love to invite you to come over to bookgoodies.com. And that's B-O-O-K-G-O-O-D-I-E-S.com. And uh, we have you look for China, and you will find the podcast, and you will be able to leave comments and even ask questions. And I'm sure she won't mind if I come back to her with a few questions to, to get answered. And if you would like to be our guest, or if you would like to fill out a form uh, that will tell us about your book that we can post on, on our website, please feel free to go up to the top of the the top of the navigation in bookgoodies.com there's a contact us form and there's a tell us about your book form and if you are one of those folks who is kdp select you can tell us about your free kindle days so we have lots of ways that you can uh, get your book out on our site and get it mentioned and uh, services as well if you you know if you have a service and you want to talk to me and do a podcast as long as you're willing to do a little education during the podcast we will be happy to talk to you so um, thank you once again China thank you, thank you to all of our listeners and I want everybody to get out there get writing and have a great day <laughs>